right. Time is 11.48. It says 24th of January 2013. I am back as promised. Uh, <clears throat> there are a few things happening here and there. I have absolutely no hope that it will materialize itself in uh, understanding what the message is and uh, people to help. Uh, we're at the stage that uh, there's more, you know, people are touching sort of the subject, like this Joel. If we can really pay attention and come and help, then perhaps, you know, we are progressing. So, last time I was saying that uh, <clears throat> I will be talking about the Baha'i administration, whether we need it or not. It is, uh, I remind myself of one thing I wanted to say that the uh, Universal Laws of Justice says that too. To reiterate the fact, when you're talking about the message of Baha'u'llah, I told you it's like those uh, Japanese mortgage. It has to go through a few generations. So when anybody talks about the message of Baha'u'llah, definitely it would have to include the forerunner, which is the Bob. There is no way to not to include Abdul Baha and Shobhi Effendi. These are the text, clear text of Baha'u'llah about the Bob, about Abdul Baha and Abdul Baha's text about Shobhi Effendi. So the whole company of the four is really one thing, one message. So if you say, I don't accept Shobhi Effendi, for whatever your reasons are, you're automatically rejecting Abdul Baha, and rejecting Abdul Baha is rejecting Baha'u'llah. You can't be really, honestly, the follower of any ideology. You know, you've taken a snap sort of, chop saw and went to the body of the prophet of God and cut his hand and his legs and says, okay, I want you that way. That's what it really means in the eye of God. Universal Laws of Justice has uh, um, a good remark about that. They have seen it. It's in their book, uh, in the message, I think, uh, 1968-1973. They say, quote, in reality, the interpreter the word is an extension of that center which is the word itself the book is the record of the utterance of Baha'u'llah while the divinely inspired interpreter is the living mouth of that book it is he and he alone who can authoritatively state what the book means Page 42 of the Messages of Universal Laws of Justice, 1968-1973. Um, I have to bring that up. Uh, just conclude the discussion we had last night. Now, this gathering Baha'is together, at the time of Shogi Effendi, it seems an impossible task one of the most powerful teacher in the Baha'i faith is Martha Root. And Martha says it is impossible to organize the Baha'i movement, that is, it used to be called movement. She, who had exerted such power that combines really many, 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 many teachers to just equals what she has done, this person with such power, who, de who had a very good understanding of what is going on, finds it impossible, it's an impossible task. So, to gather the Baha'is, really it was an impossible task. Who could do that except Shoghi Effendi, the uh, guardian of the cause of God? Now, one of the most important reasons that people, they ask me that, why do we need administration? I always tell them a very simple thing. My answer was this, that I have understood from the revelation of Baha'u'llah that he has not come 
Baha'u'llah has not appeared to get rid of the bad people. There are not that many. For that fraction of the bad people is not worth it to go on at 13 years, four people's thousands and thousands to die. It's for something else, something bigger than that. Baha'u'llah has come to unite the good people. Never mind the bad people. The good people, they do not unite. Therefore, they cause the bad things to happen. Good people of the earth, they cannot unite. This is the mission of Baha'u'llah. For him to do this, there has to be a revelation to create a willingness and a spirit in people to turn them towards the movement. But there has to be a house, a ship, that Baha'u'llah would gather his flocks, his people, a place, a house. That would be the Baha'i administration or the world order of Baha'u'llah. Without it, it is impossible. So, so it is not right, Joel, and whoever like Joel thinks that way, that thinking that Shobi Effendi actually is responsible for creations of this administration in the world order as if this was his decisions to do it. It wasn't. In the defense of that, we have to see what he says. I brought some of his writing today. I categorize it at number one and two. So, He says in the book Border of Baha'u'llah, this decision was prophesied by the Bab himself in his most holy book, the Bayan, and in the Kitab Ardas. And just last night I read it for you, the twin institution of guardianship and universal laws of justice that was in the will and testament of Abdul Baha. That's what he says. To what to what else, if not to the power of, to the power and the majesty which this administrative order, the rudiments of the future all enfolding Baha'i common felt is destined to manifest. Can these utterances of Baha'u'llah, the world's equilibrium, had been upset through the vibrating influence of this most great, this new world order. Mankind's ordered life had been revolutionized through the agency of this unique, this wondrous system, the like of which mortal eye have never witnessed. So this is the quotation Shoghi Effendi brings from the word of Baha'u'llah. I read it again. It is in the Kitab Ardas. The world's equilibrium had been upset through the vibrating influence of this most great, this new wonder, new world order. And then it continues. The Bob himself, in the course of his references to him whom God will make manifest, anticipate the system and glorifies the world order which a revelation of Baha'u'llah is destined to unfold. Quote, well is it with him in his remarkable statement in the 140 in the third chapter of the Persian Bayan, quote, who fixed his gaze upon the order of Baha'u'llah and render thanks unto his Lord, for he will assuredly be made manifest. God had indeed irrevocably ordained it in the Bayan. 
Dua says in the Bayan, the one who comes after him, will have this world order. So this was anticipated by Bob. This was talked about it in the uh, uh, Kitab Aghdas. He continues, there's two more quotations not to see this, not bad, which show if and they try to say, I, I, I did not make this myself. He goes again, quote, it should be remembered by every followers of the cause that the system of the Baha'i administration is not an innovation imposed arbitrarily upon the Baha'is of the world since the Master's passing, but derive its authority from the will and testament of, of Abdu'l-Baha is specifically prescribed in an unnumbered tablets and rest in some of its essential features upon the explicit provisions of the Kitab Ardas. It thus unifies and correlates the principles separately laid down by Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha and is indissoluble bound with the essential verities of the faith. This is in the world of Baha'u'llah, page 5. He continues, same page. Not only have they revealed all the directions required for the practical realization of those ideals which the prophets of God have visualized and from which time immemorial have inflamed the imaginations of the seers and poet in every age, they have also in an, an, an equivocal and emphatic language appointed those twin institutions of the House of Justice and of the guardianship as their chosen successors. Destined to apply the principles, promulgate the laws, protect the institutions, adapt loyally and intelligently the faith to the requirements of the progressive society, and to consummate the incorruptible inheritance which the founder of the faith had bequeathed to the world. This is in the page 19 to 20 in the world order of Baha'u'llah. So, Shoghi Afani tells us Baha'i faith is unique, that it has an administrative order, an order, a world order that has not been in the religions of the past. It was all man-made. If you look at Christianity, there's no covenant really, and there's no administration. This is what Jewel says, that it should be. What happened to Christianity? It became thousands of fractions, broken thousands of pieces, and every time took the lives and happiness and the peace of all his followers. In the Islam, there's no administration, there's no um, um, oh, system, but there's a covenant. We can see there's a covenant here, where Imam Ali is supposed to come in and to be the successors of Muhammad, and Muhammad took his hand in the last pilgrimage, and he said, he is my successor. Before he dies, he could not even take a skin of animal, that's what they were right, to write that Ali is my successor. They said Muhammad is becoming diabolical. He's dying, he doesn't understand what he says. And they let him die without writing it down. It was something oral, everybody heard it. But Ali's covenant was broken right away. And the Islam turned into Shuite and Sunni. So my friend, God, just like us, being an intelligent being, his cause, when it deals with us, also evolves. From Christianity to Islam, God sees what happened, what did we do. This is why he wants to bring this administration. This is what he says. There's no dispute. In the Kitab Ardas, I wrote it, read it for you, and even the Bayon says that it will come by the Pope. And Abdul Bak clearly talks about this twin institution of guardianship and he calls them Shoghi Effendi and his successors. We will discuss about that right now. So, 
attributing the fact that this Baha'i administration is the invention of Shoghi Effendi's alone is totally wrong. I brought all the things for you, to, so don't get into that line. So, can we separate the faith of God, the Baha'i faith, from its uh, administrative order? In the page 5 of the World Order of Baha'u'llah, the answer comes from Shob Effendi. To disassociate the administrative principles of the cause from the purely spiritual and humanitarian teachings would be tantamount to mutilations of the body of the cause, a separation that, are, that can only result in the disintegration of its component parts and the extinctions of the faith itself. And you know why? We do not need to explain this very much. We have seen what they did in the past to the dispensation, to the cause of God. The very cause that came to be saving mankind, it became the cause of killing people. There are complaints from the religions in the past as they brought a lot of good things, but they did a lot of bad things. The reason of those bad things was that because it was not organized by God. God did not organize it. It's a very amazing fact. Jesus didn't want to do it. Muhammad didn't want to do it. Or tried to, didn't, couldn't do it. The two principles in Islam of Khilafat and Vilayat, which is caliphate and guardianship, decisions of God was set aside and then it turned into Shiite and Sunnis. The two elements had to be there. So, we had seen, if we have no organizations, how many thousands of Baha'is they would come. The very cause of God will be organized in China differently, in Japan differently, in US differently. Why? Because this is what the people are. We turn the nature into what we see here in this uh, house. What is this house? Reconstruction of the nature. Because we need to organize it. Because we can't live in the nature. We do this. So if you find a behind faith without administration, then as it is the case with mankind, who made all the regimes, all the systems and everything else, they will organize the Baha'i faith according to their own wishes. And then we have thousands of Baha'i faith. And each one of them, they are against each other. This is why there is the Baha'i administration. To stop that. To unite the good people. This is the problem. I have to think, this is very simple. You people are in North America. You know what this means. Without organizations, you want to bring these people up. Of course, you know, there's going to be a lot of, lot of problem. People are asking me that, oh, this guy was a Baha'i. He was not a Baha'i. He was a lot nicer guy. After he turned Baha'i, his attitude and everything turned. I said, because before he was dead, now he's sick. I've given in my poetry that imagine there's a huge desert, whatever, prairie, some land, desolate land, a lot of graves in it. It's all peace. Now in there, there's one building. It says the hospital of the howl. Those are not dead. Somehow they get themselves and come to this hospital. In this hospital, people are coming to Baha'u'llah to get cured. There are many apartments. 
somebody's blind, somebody's deaf, somebody's crazy. So imagine somebody from the blind man in this hospital, representing of the eyes, he is going to the department where all the deaf people are and I tell them that I'm blind, watch me. Well, deaf people, they have no ear to hear him what he says and he has no eyes to dodge it. So the fight breaks up and a crazy man from the crazy department comes and tries to solve the problem between them. My brother told me that, are you crazy? Are you sick that you become Baha'i? I told him precisely, I am sick. He says, I can't believe you. He said that. I said, I am. Baha'u'llah is the divine physician. Why am I going to him? Unless I'm sick. He said, then what about me? I said, you're dead. Dead, don't go to the doctor. Sick, they go. So this is the problem that we have in the Baha'i administration. A lot of us were complaining from each other. Because we're all alive, we we're sick. So, uh, therefore, we cannot separate. We cannot separate the Baha'i administration from its spiritual teaching. It's impossible. So, let's see what else have I written. Now, it's just the way it is in this life. Everything was good in it and there's bad in it. In the Baha'i faith, it has been predicted that this administration, there's a lot of good things to it. Without it, we simply cannot have a faith. We will have thousands of faiths and all these good people believing in Baha'u'llah they are going to fight with each other. And then they create bad things. Bad things come out of good people not disagree, uh, disagreeing with each other. So, this has been realized very well by Shalvi Effendi and he gives us a many, I'll just bring you a couple of things categorize it as number four. He says, uh, I need not dwell upon what I have already reiterated and emphasized, that the administration of the cause is to be conceived as an instrument and not a substitute for the fate of Baha'u'llah. This is the end of it. So, my friend Joel, Shoghi Effendi, understand what the fate is and what the instrument of that fate is. This, every Baha'u'llah, you have to remember this. If you remember this, then don't try in your teaching to create more and more assemblies. These are instruments. Like you have thousands of saws and spanners, and, uh, but you have no carpenters. Creating a lot of tools with a lot of people to get employed with it, it's no good, is it? He says again, I need not dwell upon what I have already reiterated and emphasized that the administration of the cause is to be conceived as an instrument and not a substitute for the fate of Baha'u'llah. Page 9. Same page, it says, the whole machinery of assemblies, of committees, and conventions is to be regarded as a means and not an end in itself. Don't make your goal to create more administrations. Don't think if you have an assembly made in certain cities, that's it, that city is taken. That is not the case. You just took some tools out there. But you have no customers. 
They were carpenters to use the tools and go and do jobs and build houses. And what are the customers to buy it? So, and in order not to be misunderstood, those who are the member of these institutions, from universal laws of justice to assemblies, they are no better than any other Baha'is. This is again his word in the some answered questions showed by Abdul Basis. Now the member of the House of Justice have not individually essential sinlessness. Don't think that this member of Universal House of Justice are infallible or something about like connection to God or whatnot. It's not it's nothing like that. Shogi Effendi talks in a uh, uh, booklet I've seen about the local spiritual assembly. It says they should never be led to suppose that they are the central ornaments of the body of the cause. Intrinsically, superior to others in capacity or merit. So those were the members of these assemblies from Universal Laws of Justice of Unibody. It's, it's derogatory. <sighs> that you are not chosen by God. There's lots about this. I just brought two of them for you. But the main thing is that the administration is different from the faith of Baha. The faith of Baha'u'llah is the goal. Universal laws of justice have said that too. And the goal is to get there by these tools. Okay, what's the other point that I want to say? So, a very important point between the Baha'i faith and other religion, as God experienced with people, this administration is not going to save Baha'i faith. No. No. This has not come to save Baha'i faith. Not at all. I can't do that. It has come to save the Baha'is from fighting with each other. Help them to match with each other, to unite, to coordinate their efforts, to do that. So, Baha'u'llah has made his faith in such a way that cannot be broken anymore into pieces. And every piece becomes a weapon against other people. He says, if you don't want to accept the, the faith of God, I have made it that this time you cannot break it. Either you got to take it or leave it. So, the Baha'is are not in a situation like Christians and Muslims to break the faith of God into pieces and weaponize themselves by the faith of God against each other. This is not allowed. This is not given in this faith. But this cannot actually save the religion of God. It can't. It may just die. So, let's see. I am so sick. Right. Can this faith be saved? Can it be? Show me if any asks these questions. In the same book, World Order of the the court. What can possibly be the agency that can safeguard this Baha'i institution so strikingly resemblant in some of their features to those which have been reared by the fathers of the churches and the apostle of Muhammad from witnessing the deteriorations in character, the breach of unity, and the extinctions of influence which have befallen all organized religious hierarchies. Why should they not eventually suffer the self-same fate that has overtaken the institution which the successors of the Christ and Muhammad have reared? Show the witnesses. Will it have the same fate as Islam and Christianity? Or no? Answers, he says. 
Upon the answer quote, upon the answer given to these challenging questions will, in a great measure, depends the success of the efforts which believers in every land are now exerting for the establishment of God's kingdom upon the earth. Will this religion succeed? Show if and this is. It's up to you. It's all up to you. There was a problem, this is in the past. There were cracks in the building. Some mighty people, they came and break it. And then they used the religion against each other. So many religious war. Will the Baha'is have this religious war among themselves? No. It's the, it can't be. This has already been tested. Baha'u'llah says no. I've created a universal laws of justice, and later on a universal laws of guardianship. Baha'is, if they're Baha'i, they would have to return to that point. If that point says no, there won't be, as long as there's one universal laws of justice. But it is possible to have two universal laws of justice. Baha'is, they don't get along. They do not unite. If they want to do that, both of the universal laws of justice are gone. No universal laws of justice in place. The fate has lost its instrument. Then it's disintegrated. It dies. Yes. It's up to you, show your witnesses. So, but he points something very beautiful. He says, you have to take it as it is. If you want to get part of it and not the other part, and you think that you have a religion, you don't. It's not going to work. You will never be able to get anywhere with it. We have made it like a car. Some part doesn't work, the car stalls. You're not going to inflict mankind with a broken tools. Baha'u'llah does not allow it. He says then it'll die. There is nothing for you to use my religion, my faith, to disturb my people. And he says it has to be completely as it is, or it does not work. This is what Shovey says in page 162 of the World Order of Baha'u'llah, this master of universe. He says, no machinery falling short of the standard incalculated by the Baha'i revelation and at the variance with a sublime pattern ordained in his teachings, which the collective efforts of mankind may yet devise, can ever hope to achieve anything above or beyond that lesser peace, to which the author of our faith has alluded in his writings. This machinery of the cause of God, you can have one part of it not working, which right now is not working because there's no universal also guardianship. Continues in the same, another page, page 22 this time. He says, for nothing short of the explicit directions of their books and the surprisingly emphatic language with which they have clothed the provisions of their will could possibly safeguard the fate for which they have both so gloriously labored all their lives. Nothing short of this could protect it from the heresies and calumnies with which denominations, peoples, and governments have endeavored and will, with the increasing vigor, endeavor to assail, assail it in future. has to be a full picture, it says. It's not going to work. So, (sighs) 
Yeah. He's giving us some directions, some advice. He says to us, this is your task. Quote, we into his hand, we into whose hands so pure, so tender, so precious heritage has been entrusted, should at all times strive with unrelaxing vigilance to abstain from any thoughts, words, or deeds that might tend to dim its brilliance or injure its growth. How tremendous of a responsibility! How delicate and laborious our task! It is in the page 62 of WOB. Again, Page 18. It behooved us, dear friends, to endeavor not only to familiarize ourselves with the essential features of this supreme handiwork of Baha'u'llah, but also to grasp the fundamental differences existing between this world embracing, divinely appointed order and the chief ecclesiastical organizations of the world whether they pertain to the Church of Christ or to the ordinance of Muhammad dispensation. So he says, we have to find out what do we got now? God has given us a gift. A child has brought a phone. He takes the handset and bang, bang, and nail into the wall. He thinks the phone, the handset, is just a hammer. If we're going to use the faith of God for not what is worth, then we don't understand what, what this gift is. We can never be happy even. We don't know what we're getting, you know. I've given the story of uh, a couple of days ago of a fellow who had so much gold streak extracting, you know, from the mines. And in the city, every time, you know, it's people, he see people, they're poor or they're friends or they're problem, just give it, you know, chunk of gold to them, gold nuggets. And in return, they gave him some pieces of a stone or something. Ah, he said, okay, now I accept it. So that one day, all his gold was finished. And I was so unhappy. I said, look, I have no gold. You know, I'm trying to go to people and ask them for something. None of them are helping me anymore. So he left the town. He said, look, I have exchanged my gold for this stone. Go to another town. Somebody says, tell this story to somebody. And that guy says that, okay, what is this stone? And he looks in his pocket and his bag and says, ooh. He says, do you know what these things are, brother? what you've been exchanging with, or what people gave you? He says, no. He told him, you don't know this? He says, no. He said to him, these are diamonds. <laughs> you gave your gold for diamonds, but you didn't know what you're getting, isn't it? Therefore, you felt poor. As a Baha'i, you're losing your life, your time. If you don't know what you're getting in return, then you're like that guy. You don't know what you're endowed with. If you don't know you're in presence of God, presence of Baha'u'llah, of God is still a philosophy, an idea for you. You don't know he's literally surrounding you. You are in his ark. Then, of course, you're suffering. And you're trying to bother your fellow Baha'is. <sighs> when you I study a little bit like me, I really didn't have time to study. 
30 years in Canada, every day I got up 8 o'clock and I worked till 5 and 6 o'clock, even Saturdays. I had to pay the bills, just like you did. But as a businessman, I had a little bit of a time. On a rainy days, here and there, I studied. But all the time I was thinking about it, all the time. Even when I'm on the ladder, always I thought and always I discovered something. Because I just liked it so much. So I found Baha'i Faith is like the city of New York or Toronto or Vancouver or Paris, London, I don't know, Frankfurt. And the religions of the past are like those villages in India or in Africa or wherever in the world, little village. In comparison, on that village there's 500 people or a thousand people, here we have several millions. How could we have the several millions? Unless we have organizations, unless we have a city plan, unless we have roads, we have plumbing, we have doctors, we have everything in place. You could not contain one million people if you want to live like a village. There won't be. They all die. But how if it is like this? It's a huge, 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 not incomparable. Therefore, God has organized it. It's made it like a city. If you think we don't need this city, I would get just all of us, as Jewel wishes, go to the humanitarian principles of Shovey Fendices, get together in no time, we're going to fight with each other, Jewel. We are going to fight. Because we're good, but we're ignorant. We don't know. That's why you have so many Baha'is, as you mentioned, and rolled Baha'i website, that they left the faith. They are like those guys in that hospital. They were kicked out by other sick people and they left. But leaving the hospital, you're exposed to death. So when a Baha'i make mistakes, you assume the position of a teacher. Try to make him to be aware of what is he doing to himself and to other people. Not getting disappointed and leaving. If there's a problem, there's nobody else but you. You gotta fix it. Administration cannot fix itself. I'll tell you that right now. Administration is just a building. So you're protected. Everybody has his own room. But if something goes wrong in this room, in this house, the citizens, the denizens, those who occupy, they have to fix it. It's you and us. It's us. It's all a problem if administration doesn't work. So, but it is very important to read some more about what this administration is. Sure, if Andy has not, Baha'i Faith in general, has not decided to just create some kind of a administration, a system against and opposed to every other systems in the world. It's not so. Baha'i Faith has come to unite everyone. It's not a replacement of what we have. It's the lack of what we should have. Baha'i Faith is not opposing, but whatever mankind has got to this point, every good thing is acceptable, but something they don't have. Baha'i Faith has come to fulfill that. Let's read. Page 63 of the World Order of Baha'u'llah. Uh, actually, it's page 41. Let there be no misgiving. Quote, let there be no misgiving as to the animating purpose of the worldwide law of Baha'u'llah. 
far from aiming at the subversion of the existing foundations of society. Well, if it has not come, show if and this is, to get rid of what's out there. Continue and quote. It seeks to broaden its basis, to remold its institution in a manner consonant with the needs of an ever-changing world. Bar of it has come to help United States of America, not get rid of it. It has come to help Canada. It has come to help every possible good regime that are in the world. It has not come to tell them they should not be there. Continuing quote, it can conflict with no legitimate allegiances, nor can it undermine essential loyalty. Its purpose is neither to stifle the flame of a sane and intelligent patriotism in man's heart, nor to abolish the system of the national autonomy so essential if the evils of the excessive centralizations are to be avoided. It doesn't come to tell to the people of Texas not to love your state or not to love your city or not to love your country. He says there's a problem. There's an evil going on there. Too much of centralizations. If you do that, it tells them you create in a society a black hole. It sucks the energy of all its component into the black hole. If the sun dies and turns into a black hole, then all the planets are sucked into it. That's the evil of excessive centralization. Continuing quote, it does not ignore, nor does it attempt to suppress the diversity of the ethnical origins. Bhavid has not come to say all the blacks has to marry white and white marry this and that and at the end of the day we have one race and one this and that. That is not our goal. Abdul Ba says, when you enter in a garden it's all red, it's beautiful, but isn't it nicer that there are all kind of colors? I'd rather see the white is stay white and black is stay black. What's wrong? It's more beautiful. There's more variety. Continuing quote. It does not ignore nor does it attempt to suppress the diversity of ethnical origins, of climate, or history, or language, and tradition, or thoughts and habits that differentiate the peoples and nations of the world. That's not what I've come for. Now what is it? It calls for a wider loyalty. For a larger aspiration that any that has animated the human race. For a larger aspiration than any that has animated the human race. It insists upon the subordinations of the national impulses and interests to the imperative claims of a unified world. It repudiates excessive centralization on one hand and disclaim all attempts at the uniformity on the other. Its watch for this unity in diversity. See what we want to do with this administration? We're not trying to get rid of any local, any state, provincial, even any national, any race, any color, any religions. Anything you have, it's all good. Show if and this is all pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. You don't know how to put it together to create humanity. This is where God has come. This is what Baha'i Faith is. Baha'i Faith is that design, that formula that the existing systems, anything that's inherited, colors even, anything that we have and it is good to put it together in a conglomerated system that benefits everyone. Heart on his own dies, brain on his own does not exist. But if all of them, they come together in a design that creates a body, everyone survives. 
this is what the high field wants to do this is the aim the big picture of the Baha'i administration goes on quote it does not constitute merely the enunciation of an ideal but it stands inseparably associated with an institution adequate to embody its truth demonstrates its validity and perpetuate its influence it implies an organic change in the structure of the present-day society a change such as the world has not yet experienced look at the goal of God this is not something artificial this is something that exists it is the primordial soup we just have to have the design that formula and all this amino acids and protein they come and create a DNA which organically grow to become a man, a plant, something, anything that's supposed to go organically though. It will grow by itself. It just has to be put together, it says. Let's continue, same page 43. It represents the consummation of human evolution, an evolution that has had its earliest beginning in the birth of family life subsequent development and achievement of tribal solidarity leading in turn to the constitution of the city state and expanding later later in the institution of the independence and the sovereign nations someday million years ago one male looked at another female and he loved that one she did too they got together there was not a sexual mating. After that, they still wanted to be together. Love. Then children were born because they loved each other. They loved the children. Family began. They found themselves or not protected. Other people might claim her husband. Other claim might claim his wife. Then they found other families. They got together, they created a village. Then there was a head of village, a chief, a little army, a little something. Then they found out mankind organically grow to come down to this point that we have all these nations. Just like that primordial soup. We're all there. Everything is fine. But we do not have a universal federation. These bodies, parts, have to be put together because it's its destiny, because that's what benefits of individual citizens. Because under this, we get rid of the arms in the world. If there's no organization, how can we do this? We have to be together in one big voice when we reach to a majority to stop our government and the governments of the world. Don't waste your money on fighting with each other. Let's go fight the nature that might want to destroy you. In Africa every day the sand has been blown by the wind and the fertile lands is getting buried. That's where the fight is save the planet diseases can come from everywhere wait once we get together then the space becomes a huge problem all kind of stones all kind of meteor showers is going to attack us we need to know where the front is even if you want to fight not between ourselves not between our nations that's the goal 
I'm going to continue to this last part that I've chosen to talk about. It should also be borne in mind that the machinery of the cause has so fashioned. This is the most beautiful thing showing for this is. It should also be borne in mind that the machinery of the cause has been so fashioned that whatever is deemed necessary to incorporate into it in order to keep it in the forefront of all progressive movement can, according to the provision made by Baha'u'llah, be safely embodied therein. This talks to us about what? That the religion has to be according to science and logic. The fate of Baha'u'llah is already revealed. Whether it's according to science or not is already there. He's talking about us when dealing with a subject. Baha'u'llah is telling us. I brought you the constitution, I brought you the fundamentals. I made you the foundations, he says. You build a house now, your own house. You're a spiritual house, every one of you, in the whole country, the whole city. Later on, the universal house of guardianship is formed. They want to know certain things. For example, what are the rules about adultery? There are crazy cases. Maybe a father raped his daughter, a brother raped his sister, somebody raped an animal. There's so many ways. This is impossible for God to come and bring all these rules. Baha well, says, I brought you the foundations. Now you guys grow up on this foundation under the universal laws of justice and universal laws of guardianship. Universal laws of guardianship takes the questions from people, takes the demands from them, and they interpret the writing to see if they, those things can be met. Then they give it to the universal laws of justice, they make it into the law, and then it works. It's a dynamic religion, it's not a dogmatic one. This is one of its reasons. We can actually build on what God already has done. This is the true features of the Baha'i administration of the world order of Baha'u'llah. It's not a dogmatic one that this is it and that's it. No. Universal laws of justice could enact laws and they can change it later on. Forever. Like any other countries. And yet, if it is one all around the world, by the formula of Baha'u'llah, it will become infallible. Not any nine can be together to become infallible. No, there's a way to do it. If you have all my cells in my body on the top of this table and you point at him to talk, it won't talk. What makes all these cells to talk is the design, the formula that I put it together, which is really me. I am not my cells. I am that design. Baha'u'llah has made a design. This time out of nine people, actually of all the people of the earth, they come together finally, it filters into that nine. As long as there's universals of guardianship besides it, it will function, otherwise it cannot function. Once those two are together, like a mother and father, if you, the way he puts it together, like he has put my body together and I speak, if he puts it together the way he says to do it, that body will speak the word of God. It's amazing. It's hard to understand, I know, for some of us. Do I have anything else to mention here? Okay. I think I spoke about this administration. I've done that before too. But uh, just to say to Joel, since he uh, sent me those emails, 
bring it up, whether we need the administrations or who is the administrator. I had to clarify a few things. So, uh, now the part that puzzles a lot of Baha'is, I've spoken about this before, but I'm just going to say that quickly. One well, of the puzzling questions is that, in the will and testament of Abdul Baha, uh, Abdul Baha says, it is incumbent upon the guardian of the cause of God to appoint, or I can't remember paraphrasing it, to choose whom he shall be succeeding him. Otherwise, there will be differences in the middle of the So Abdul Baha says, surely if India has to have, has to choose a successor for himself. And why is that? Why didn't Shoei do it? Actually, Shoei Effendi is not bound to listen to Abdul Baha. Abdul Baha himself can change his word. Shoei Effendi and uh, Abdul Baha, they're all one office of interpreter. They can change the word of each other. Always the one comes at the front is the one that they follow, not the one in the past. If Baha'u'llah says there are two wives you can marry, and Abdul Baha says that, he meant one, then we take the one that Abdul Baha says. Or Abdul Baha says something and show if Andy changes it and say this is what it means, then we go with that one. Same as countries, you know, if the United States created a law a hundred years ago and now the new one changes it, naturally this new one is the law, the past one is the relics. And just the way it goes. So, Shoei Effendi is not bound by what Abdul Baha says anyways. But, Abdul Baha said this simply because he knew that Shoei Effendi does not have a child or should have a successor. You have read some answered questions. Abdul Baha goes deep into the Bible and interprets a lot of heavy duty stuffs. Wouldn't he know that Isaiah said at the end there's a child leading them? It doesn't talk anything after that. So Abdul Baha would know after Shoei Effendi, which is the child, which he says he's alive, he's ready, there won't be anybody else. But then he knows we people have done it all this in the past, and we're going to do it now again, trying to find a solution. We don't take the no for the answer. There had to be no successor. If there was Shoei Effendi, would have chosen. He did all the work that was necessary. So, but we say, no, there had to be because we have this question or that question. We don't want to find the answer ourselves. And then we say, no, somebody else has to be there, you know, babysit us and tell us. Therefore, like Mason Remy or others, they come down and try to, for the sake of God, they think, they should claim that they are guardians. After one knows this is going to happen. So what is he going to say? What an engineer he is, isn't it? He says that, all right, guys, sure. You will have problems and headaches with many, many, many thousands, probably. He says, all right. The guardian has to be the son of Shogu Effendi or chosen by Shogu Effendi, which means if he didn't, nobody else can then claim he is the guardian, isn't it? That's it. Beautifully done. Sealed it. This is why. Now you're saying that why Shoei Effendi talks about guardians when he didn't have a son or an appointee. The answer is that those guardians are the five elders. He says there are 24 of them. Five of them will come in future. So far we do not know who these five others are. He does not include himself as one of those. If they're called guardians, and he's called guardian, no, no, he says they're different. They're called elder, otherwise also Abdul Baha calls them guardians. He's referring to them. And then if it says the guardian has to be to the end of the Baha'i faith, sure, these elders, they die and go. Then what? Then there's general guardianships. Of course there is. The whole missionary of the faith of God is to make us be aware of God and communicate with Him. Perhaps a lot of people are going to get educated in this new system of God. Therefore, there will be guardians in the future. I don't know what are the questions that 
is in the mind of yours, if you have it, you know, call me again or send some emails that uh, it's bothering you. When I looked at it, I see that how beautifully this is done. Imagine you have a guardian, infallible, like Shoghi Effendi, and also you have universal laws of justice. These two cannot be at the same time. Think about it. They are both infallible. How would they work then? Remember, the philosophy of the cause of God says there's always one boss, one manifestation. If Bob is the manifestation of God, Baha'u'llah does not claim. So is in the Christianity. When Jesus goes to the river of Jordan and John the Baptist says to him, Oh no, you have to baptize me. Jesus says, No, no, no. For now you do that. So everyone sees that I accept and approve of you and all what you're doing. He didn't want to at that time. So Baha'u'llah never claimed his mission when Bob is on the spot. Then Baha'u'llah comes. But then Baha'u'llah is there. Of course, Abdul Baha is not in charge. He's not. Because there has to be one. Abdul Baha goes. Baha'u'llah goes. Abdul Baha comes in. Abdul Baha goes. Shoghi Effendi comes in. Well, now if the universal house of justice has to be inspired by God as an infallible. What do you need? Another guardian infallible on the side. Just two. Doesn't, doesn't make sense, doesn't it? Even in future that we have a universal laws of guardianship, the universal laws of guardianship is not infallible. They're a specialist or scientist, organized, and they're that institutions. The final seal of approval that is infallible is given only to the universal laws of justice. Universal laws of justice is like an owner of the house. They're not plumbers. The owner of the house is not a plumber, he's not an electrician, he's not a drywaller, but he has the money, he has the authority to say what has to be done. A specialist will come and do the job and he pays them. Finally, it's his design. Okay, so the scientists and everybody else, those who gets inspired by God, many thousands of them, they're all organized under universal laws of guardianship. They interpret the writings based on the question that are asked. Universal laws of justice, they don't answer this kind of questions. They do universal laws of guardianship based on the logic and science, which is the principle of the Baha'i faith. Then they hand it to the universal laws of justice. They look at it and they decide accept it or not. So it's kind of a mother and father, you know. The Tom Universal House of Justice needs the Universal House of Guardianship because they cannot interpret. They're told that they're not interpreters. So somebody has to interpret for them. It's like plumbing goes wrong in the house. You have all the money, you have all the power, but you're not a plumber. You don't know how to fix it, you, so you need that. This is where the universal laws of guardianship come. They're a specialist. They're elected, but they work with their specialist. And they decide, based on the science and logic, where the facts are. Based on those elucidations and explanations, then there's no anarchy in the world. The Baha'is, they all know this is interpreted by their own elected representative and then turned into law again by their own elected representative. I've answered all these questions. I refer to that book, it's called The Look at the Baha'i Faith and the Universals of Guardianship in my website, or listen to several of these uh, videos I've made to explain this. I hope it was sufficient. I'm surely... I don't know what's going to happen. A couple of days ago, suddenly I had a pain here. 
So I go, they told me to get gallstones, gallbladder. I go to a hospital, they said it's not very bad and very big, but you know, you gotta get rid of it. Meantime, they had a reading on my sugar. I found out the sugar is 6.7. I said, wow, you came here for gallstone, but now you have a new problem. <laughs> so I had to start to cut on the sugar and have a splendor instead uh, to fix the problem. I really don't want to stay around uh, unless I can do what I like to do, which is teaching. I start something bigger. If not, all the headaches that I have is uh, going to do their jobs pretty soon. Allah up to you all. Right.